Well then, uh, thank you all. Good evening, everyone. I'll go ahead and call uh, the committee of the whole to order. And uh, we just have one item on our agenda tonight. Uh, first time running this since uh, Council, Corman, uh, Council Member Corman could not be here due to him rearranging his schedule for the events today. Um, but hopefully he'll be able to join us for the Council meeting later. Um, so our one agenda item uh, is Willow, Willow Crest Townhomes Project. And I, we have a presentation. And I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to uh, Mark Santos Johnson to introduce our speaker. Um, thank you, Ryan, and um, good evening, members of the council. Um, my name is Mark Santos Johnson. I am the community development and housing manager in the community and development, um, the Department of Community Development at the city. And um, it's my great pleasure to um, introduce and welcome Kathleen Hosfeld, uh, who is the Homestead Community Land Trust Executive Director, to our meeting tonight. Um, the city and the Renton Housing Authority have worked very closely with Kathleen and her team since early 2016 as part of the Sunset Area Transformation Plan. Since home ownership in the Sunset Area is only about 33% compared with 50% for Renton Citywide, affordable home ownership is a major need and a significant benefit for the community. Kathleen and the Homestead team have done a remarkable job securing resources, designing and building the 12 unit Willowcrest townhomes. We are thrilled to have Kathleen here tonight to share more information about the project, which is almost complete. Kathleen. Thank you so much, Mark. I'm going to try to share my screen here. It's a pleasure and an honor to be with you and, um, and to have the opportunity to share this great update with you about our project. And as we do that, I wanted to just take a moment and acknowledge that we are building homes on the unceded, occupied ancestral lands of the Coast Salish people and their ancient heritage of, uh, uh, includes stewarding, protecting, and caring for uh, the waterways that we call home. So uh, we're excited about what's happening at Willowcrest. Uh, I'm going to be going over the, the homes themselves, our construction process, what it means to be a, a community land trust home, uh, and the, the background of, of community land trust home ownership. So this is an artist rendering uh, uh, from the beginning of the project. We're now, the homes are actually taking shape and not quite as green uh, as, as depicted here on the construction site. but. Uh, uh, nonetheless beautiful. The Willowcrest townhomes are located uh, behind the Glenwood Avenue townhomes off, off of Glenwood, between Glenwood and Edmonds. And uh, the Renton Housing Authority uh, contributed the land for this parcel, for this uh, development rather. Um, and they, the parcel actually fronts on Edmonds but we're developing um, a slice that's uh, between the two streets currently. This is a very special project. Not only is it affordable home ownership for people who would otherwise be shut out of home ownership due to high costs in King County, but it is also a highly environmentally sustainable development. Uh, it is the first permanently affordable development of its size built with the features that it has that significantly reduced utilities costs and climate impacts. Um, as I mentioned, it's built on land that was contributed to, by the Renton Housing Authority. There, these will be 12 three and four bedroom townhomes that achieve net zero energy usage through very highly efficient systems and construction and the use of uh, solar panels for on-site energy generation. Uh, in addition to the land contribution by the Renton Housing Authority, we are so grateful to the city's uh, contribution, uh, $25,000 for the Housing Opportunity, from Housing Opportunity Fund grant, uh, and a $332,000 uh, green building grant. So it was your contribution that made this uh, deeply deep green uh, development possible, and we uh, are so grateful to be partnering with you on um, establishing this demonstration project as what um, we like to call a demonstration of uh, something that benefits the climate but also reduces 
the total cost of home ownership. Uh, we believe that the investments in the energy efficiency and also stormwater management actually will reduce our homeowners monthly utilities costs and thereby make these homes even more affordable than would otherwise be so. We have had a number of partners um, in the financing of this project, uh, including J.P. Morgan Chase, who uh, contributed a grant at the very beginning that enabled our staff to work with the Rent and Housing Authority to, to locate this property and then develop it um, into the project that you will see today. The Edwards Mother Earth Foundation contributed money for the green features. Um, King County's regular housing um, uh, finance through the Transit Oriented Development Funding. Um, also King County Waterworks uh, grant paid for the exemplary stormwater management um, techniques that we've used. Washington State Housing Trust Fund, Community Frameworks, which is the uh, distrib distributor of HUD shop funds and the Federal Home Loan Bank. This is a very complicated funding stack for um, a project, in part because of its deep green features. Um, and a good 50% or slightly more than that will be paid for by homeowners' own mortgages. Uh, so it's really a, a social entrepreneurship model that leverages our, um, our homeowners' ability to pay for their housing and thus leverages uh, the public investment in, in the homes as well. Here's a site map of, of the homes. To your right is uh, Glenwood Avenue and the Glenwood Townhomes. And uh, there's a, a place structure that the Glenwood Townhomes and the Willowcrest Homes will share, uh, a new place structure that's going in shortly. Um, you can see there are three uh, clusters of buildings, four units in each. The architectural design for this is really lovely because they are uh, designed for neighborly interactions, um, but they're also designed for um, giving each homeowner a sense of privacy and private entrance. You'll notice um, you can see the word entry um, you can see that the entry for each unit is on a different side of the building. So unlike sort of that, that uh, little boxes on the hillside kind of idea of, of people going up their stair steps in lockstep to open their front door, um, all of these homes have separate entrances that gives them a sense of being uh, their own unique residence. And the um, investments in energy efficiency it mean a lot of um, additional insulation in the buildings. So they're going to be a lot quieter. You will be able to forget that you share a wall with um, another household because uh, this, there will not be the same um, noise uh, disbursement throughout the building. So, and you can see that, that there's uh, walkways um, that allow people to interact with each other um, throughout the space and this, the walkway that goes to the play structure is something that will um, uh, unite all of the homes in this area. So as I mentioned, there are uh, three and four bedroom homes, three story homes. The three bedrooms are 1,200 square feet and the four bedrooms are 1,400 square feet. They have two bathrooms, one car garage. Um, they have an open concept floor plan. And there are balconies off the kitchen, uh, which gives some additional livable space. And some of the units will have views. You can see this picture of Mount Rainier. That's not hypothetical. That's actually from uh, the second floor of one of the um, homes in the A building. Um, that was in, oh, I would say October of, of last year. The, the size of the homes is important to us um, in the current environment because, as you may know, the rental housing, uh, which there uh, are many uh, rental housing developers in King County, they tend to build one, twos, uh, studios, ones and two bedrooms. And one of the things that we've heard a lot is that families don't have places for larger households. 
So in this first phase of the Willowcrest development, we've been emphasizing the three and four bedroom homes for larger families. Um, when we developed the second phase of Willowcrest on the rest of the, um, the land that's available, we may have some smaller units, um, but we're still maintaining that, that focus on uh, households that have uh, multiple um, household members. So we've got, as I mentioned, uh, solar panels, Energy Star appliances, water sense, uh, water features, ductless mini split heating cooling system, um, uh, very high energy efficient heat pump water heater, um, and the water sense low flow uh, fixtures to conserve water. Most of the homes will be priced within the range of 310 to $315,000 which is affordable to households making uh, 65 to 70 percent area median income and I'll explain in precise terms how much that is in a minute. Um, three of the homes will be priced affordably for those who meet the following criteria though. They will have an income of 60 percent or below area median income and uh, also have been qualified by an agency to be housing unstable or homeless. And I have just uh, been talking to a private donor who may be contributing an additional uh, $25,000 to two of these homes, which would effectively lower the, um, the income level that could qualify for these homes even further, which would be uh, a wonderful uh, thing. So keep your fingers crossed that, uh, that that will be how that works out. Um, so in our program, we serve people who earn less than 80% of area median income as defined by HUD for our uh, region. And the numbers that you see on your screen now, which are on our website and also on the Willowcrest Townhomes website, um, are the upper limit in that 80% um, category. We do not price our homes right at 80 um, because that then becomes very difficult to find people who are right at 80. We, um, we price much lower than that to create um, a lot of room above and below the price point uh, for people to qualify. Uh, examples of what um, these incomes mean are 60% AMI, a three-person household would be making about 64000 Dollars, um, a four-person household in the range of seventy-one or seventy-two thousand, if you want to round up. The seventy percent AMI, which is kind of the upper limit of what we expect people who apply for these homes, is um, seventy-five thousand uh, for a three-person household and uh, and eighty-three thousand for a four-person household. So that just gives you a sense of exactly um, how much it means to be in those percentage categories. So I'm going to move on uh, to explaining uh, what it means to be a community land trust home uh, and then we'll get into a construction update in, in a minute and see some of the current photos. Um, so uh, community land trust home ownership, how is that different from other home ownership uh, programs? There's two aspects of that. One is permanent affordability. So the public investment at the first sale sets the affordable price of each home, uh, but future prices are controlled through agreements with our buyers. Uh, so when someone uh, purchases a home through our program, uh, they purchase the improvements on the land, the home itself, they do not purchase the land, and they lease the land from us for a small monthly fee. The, um, the ground lease or covenant on the home spells out a formula that is the rate at which the home can appreciate and that uh, the home appreciates at a rate that allows folks to earn equity, um, develop a nest egg, but also keeps the price of the home affordable to future buyers. That's what we mean by permanent affordability. Um, community Land Trust Home Ownership also offers a democratic community governance uh, where we center the voices of those who benefit from the homes and land in our governance 
through Homestead membership. So every homeowner in our program is a member of Homestead and, and a partner with us in stewarding the land and the public investments in our homes. Um, and they also have democratic uh, g a voice in the local governance of their own development through homeowners associations or community associations. So Willowcrest will take part in democratic governance in both Homestead, but also in um, their local homeowners association. So community land trusts um, are defined in the federal statute. They are membership-based nonprofit organizations. Um, we acquire and use land to benefit low and moderate income neighborhoods. The uh, definition of a community land trust is in the Gonzales Cranston Community Housing uh, Statute. Uh, designed to um, emphasize community-based models for housing development. Uh, the community land trust model is super flexible and can be adapted to a variety of uses where there's a desire to retain um, control of land, uh, so uh, uh, to remove it permanently from the speculative market. Um, but we focus on home ownership because uh, there are so few organizations in King County that are working on affordable home ownership. We have lots of great rental housing organizations and and great um, you know uh, city housing authorities that do rental housing. We need more homes for ownership, and that's why that's our focus. Uh, we often uh, think it's helpful to just remind people that there is a housing continuum and that um, there are different types of housing that meet different um, income categories. On This is a chart from the 2017 King County Affordable Housing Task Force presentation that um, established what those uh, different income levels are. That zero to 30% AMI, that's, that's your shelter and your rental housing for very low or no income folks. Um, that 30 to 50% AMI, that's your traditional uh, uh, rental housing. On the low end of that spectrum, you'll have um, a very high need for wraparound services to stabilize people and keep moving them upward in economic mobility. Uh, to, as you approach that fifth upper limit of the 50% AMI, um, fewer and fewer services are needed. Um, and then you enter into our category, which is that 50 to 80% AMI, where there's some uh, rental and, and sometimes it's, um, it's uh, developed by for-profit entities rather than non-profit entities. But in this category, home ownership becomes a very attractive solution for municipalities because it does leverage the homeowner's ability to pay um, and, and thereby um, makes it an efficient use of public dollars. The permanent affordability of our homes also is an, an investment in the long-term use of uh, public funds because a one-time investment in our homes actually serves about seven buyers over time without reinvestment. So we expect that about seven people will, uh, seven households will sit on the same home over a period of about 50 years. Um, so it's, we, uh, I think it's overstating it to call it one and done, uh, but it's very close to that. Um, this is an important income category to serve because it does represent uh, about 17% of uh, King County residents, of which 44% um, are cost burdened or extremely cost burdened by their housing. So we have um, noted that there's a need for uh, a significant number of uh, new affordable homes, uh, home ownership specifically for this income category. And our efforts are intended to scale production to meet that need. Uh, community land trusts have a really proud heritage um, in the civil rights era. Uh, they were um, they were conceived in Albany, Georgia, by um, Charles and Shirley Sherrod, uh, the late Representative John Lewis, 
And uh, Slater King, who was the uh, cousin of Martin Luther King Jr., they were on the Student Nonviolent uh, Coordinating Committee and were seeking to help uh, black sharecroppers register to vote. What happened when they did that, this is, if you know the South, uh, back in the day, uh, at that time, there could be 75% population um, of black population in an area and only 2% black uh, voting uh, registrations. So that was the issue that they were addressing. So um, they were encouraging people to register to vote. And when that happened, um, all these sharecroppers were thrown off their land and had nowhere to live and had no way to make a living. So uh, Charles Sherrod, who was pastor, um, put on his big boy pants and went out and raised tons of money. And they bought 6,000 acres in uh, just outside of Albany, Georgia. And they created the first community land trust called New, New Communities. And it was, uh, it was to be primarily farmland, but also homes and businesses. And, um, and so they created the model that we use today, which is um, the separation of the land, the title of the land from the improvements on the land, whether that be farm buildings or businesses or homes. Um, they also created that member governance structure. Um, and, um, and that's a really important piece that uh, we emphasize when we talk about community land trust because the traditional charity model is of people of means doing good for on behalf of uh, people who are perceived to have um, fewer means. But in this model, everyone is on an equal footing in furtherance of this model through membership in, uh, in the Community Land Trust. Uh, important um, as we're all um, increasing our awareness of the ways we can increase the social and racial justice um, impacts of what we're doing to recognize that those types of models um, speak to that issue. So um, we came to this, and um, it's no surprise to you that um, our work is seeks to address this egregious uh, gap between uh, people's incomes and what homes cost. Um, back in 2014, at this this orange or reddish line, depending on how it's showing up on your screen, and that was median home price, 462,000. That's in King County. Um, and then a, a price that was affordable to a median income household, 100% area median income, uh, was, um, you know, $70,000 less than that. But for this gray line, uh, this is a modest income household, the kind of folks we serve. And you can see that the, the price, even back in 2014, was $220,000 different. Um, then five years uh, pass, and that gap between even what's affordable to a median income household uh, on average has um, has widened, and it's only gotten worse for, for those we serve. So home prices have increased about 46% on average around the county, um, and they say that incomes have increased 23%. That's only according to HUD. In real terms, of course, I don't know anybody who's in Income has increased 23%. Do you? Um, we we think that this is primarily just the skewing upward of the income numbers due to an influx of, of highly paid high tech workers, um, high tech and biotech. So uh, so the 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 home prices have gotten uh, bad for the people we serve, but they're also not great for everybody else. Uh, the community land trust model also is um, represents an anti-displacement strategy that is working. This is another one of those really important conversations to have in the light of our um, awareness of um, uh, racial justice and uh, housing inequities that have impacted minorities in particular. Um, so, uh, community land trust when when communities and and membership organizations own land together 
that is a, a bulwark against the displacement, especially the wholesale displacement of, a, of entire um, a class or income category of people. And you can see, this is the Puget Sound Regional Council uh, displacement map. You can see that the Sunset neighborhood is um, one of those. And so we believe that uh, Willowcrest is, um, is a great anti-displacement strategy um, for the Sunset neighborhood and will uh, create uh, permanent affordability um, for the people who are of modest incomes forever. This will give them, uh, give uh, affordability, like I like to say, give affordability a permanent address in the Sunset neighborhood. So specifically what Homestead does is we, we build new construction or we rehab existing homes. We go out and we, sub, we uh, fundraise to subsidize the price of each home to what is affordable. Um, and then we split the title at the sale, the first sale, and the land is uh, held in trust by Homestead and stewarded by the members collectively. And the owners lease the land for a small monthly fee um, and then they agree through their ground lease or covenant to sell the home at the time of their choosing um, at a formula price that allows them to build equity uh, but uh, also allows them to sell the home to the next income qualified household at an affordable price. That formula, by the way, right now is 1.5% compounded annually. And I, I don't think I included in my slides, but that allows at current prices, it allows someone to build equity at about at a rate of about thirty five thousand dollars for every five years you own the home, um, which you know is not the same as a market rate windfall. But for someone whose only other alternative is renting, it's a great way to build a nest egg um, uh, towards whatever you would like to direct that money towards. Um, here's another way to say what I just said. Um, so Community Land Trust Homeownership sus subsidizes that initial price of the home and controls the future cost increase through agreements with our buyers. The buyers purchase the land and removing the land um, is part of what makes the home affordable, but um, it's not the whole story. In many cases, we are subsidizing a significant part of the, the cost of construction as well. Um, so land is owned collectively through Homestead. Um, the ground lease or covenant is typically a 99 year uh, renewable and inheritable document that spells out the responsibilities of the owner and the amount of the ground lease fee and it contains that resale formula. So everyone knows at the beginning uh, what the resale formula is going to be. Uh, that doesn't change um, uh, for uh, the person over time. It's, it's not changed, it's just the, the fee that you buy in with. So um, community ownership and govern governance is a really important part of uh, community land trust home ownership. Um, a third of the board are our own homeowners. It's a really important aspect of being a community land trust that's also in the federal definition. Um, so we have a third of our homeowners are on the board and another two thirds of our board are community advocates. Um, and and uh, the members elect the board and they elect the officers of the board. And the board oversees me and I oversee the staff. Uh, these are some of the statistics of our program. We have uh, 220 homes in trust currently. We've uh, sold, resold 52 of those homes. So 25% of our uh, trust has turned over at least once. Um, and as a result, we've served, we've created first time home buying opportunities for um, 272 households. We have a 55% uh, minority ownership rate which compares to a 26% minority ownership rate in all of King County. Um, we have a, a pipeline of, um, uh, Willowcrest is part of this 33 affordable homes in development. Uh, we have a pipeline of another 100 affordable homes 
Um, and through an agreement uh, with the uh, Taylor Morrison Homes uh, as part of a density bonus granted by the city of Renton uh, for the Erlington Village development, we are uh, bringing seven homes from Erlington Village into trust. Um, most of our homes are townhomes or condominiums that built for density. Um, that's an economic rather than a philosophical um, choice. And we do have the, um, uh, the majority of our homes are twos and three bedroom homes uh, with some fours and a, a couple of um, much larger homes as well. So, uh, uh, construction update. Um, you may know that we broke ground in the fall of 2019, uh, but construction didn't actually start until March of uh, 2020. Um, we achieved 50% completion in October and we're uh, approaching construction completion now. Uh, we uh, laid down some asphalt on the driveways this, uh, just this last week, um, got lucky with some weather. And we will be um, getting, we hope, a temporary certificate of occupancy in the first couple of weeks of April with um, certificate of occupancy, occupancy in May. So here's what they looked like last week before the pavement was, was, uh, um, was laid down. You can see uh, that a beautiful blue from the rendering has been faithfully reproduced. Um, and you can see the, the tilt in the uh, roofs that's uh, orienting them for the solar panels. This is a, a picture of, of um, one of the kitchens. Uh, this is the second floor of uh, a unit. And you can see where this cardboard box is. That's where the refrigerator will go. Um, I'm going to, and you can see the door onto the um, balcony, which doesn't have a handrail yet. So uh, definitely not finished. Um, but here's another view into the kitchen. This is a really interesting aspect of the energy efficiency features. Uh, the, um, you may know that refrigerators uh, send off a lot of heat. Um, and so we have positioned the water heater and the refrigerator close to each other so that the heat from the uh, refrigerator can be captured in the, um, in the hot water system, um, which makes it incredibly energy efficient. Uh, in terms of our sales process, um, oops, um, we will be um, uh, starting it with information sessions late this month, March 31st. We've had public information sessions about Willowcrest starting in December uh, and going through the 1st of March, but um, now we'll be offering some sessions to guide people on how they can apply for the homes. We will have a, a model unit set up in early April, and we will shoot a three-dimensional virtual tour. Um, it's a technique that a lot of folks are using during COVID. Um, we find it's, it's not only a great way to um, cut down on the number of in-person tours, but it's also kind of fun to have a 3D model of your home. Um, so we'll be... Uh, uh, posting that as soon as we have the model unit ready. And uh, then we will um, qualify people to uh, tour um, in person uh, starting in mid to late April. And uh, just uh, so that you are aware, our, our program participants go through a lot of training um, and lots of public meetings in terms of learning about what does it mean to own a community mm -hmm. land trust home, um, and in this case, we'll be doing information sessions to get them ready to be part of a, an HOA as well. So there is a, a website set up for um, Willowcrest. It's uh, willowcresttownhomes.com. There's lots of information, um, floor plans, the site plan, information about the neighborhood, 
um, additional information about what it means to be a community land trust home. Um, at the income limits and how to apply are uh, at the available tab. And then um, event information like um, um, getting information about the upcoming how to apply uh, events is on the, it's actually called news now, I believe, we changed the, it doesn't say blog anymore, it says news. So, so that's the end of my presentation. I uh, would love to answer your questions about all this. Thank you so much, Kathleen. Um, great presentation. Uh, really loved seeing the Affordable Housing Task Force uh, uh, data. That I was I was proud to be a part of that task force and to see that being put to work. Um, so much so much data to unpack here. I'm sure we have a couple questions from folks. I'm going to see if I can see if we have any hands raised. Might we be able to, unless we want to stay on the slide, go back to the screen where you can see everyone. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Do we have any questions? Feedback, comments, I'll take, I have a few if not, so why don't I get us started? Um, so one, I can't, I can't start by saying how much I love this project um, and how much the need for affordable home ownership was. The slides you pulled out from uh, the, the Affordable Housing Task Force, uh, that was certainly an area that you know I, I felt was important because I know, as you said, this is part of the equity work. This is part of uh, wealth building opportunities uh, for for, uh, for for folks who haven't had access to those previously. So um, very happy to see that highlighted in the presentation. Um, a couple questions uh, stemming from that, knowing some of the other barriers and access. Uh, how about down payments? That was one thing I don't know if I heard. Um, is that something that would still be at the same requirement as, as, as it would be for a normal um, market rate house? No, in, in our model, um, we only require 1% down. So, um, you know, between $2,500 and $3,000 is the typical down payment. Um, you know, one, one of the things you find with um, commercial lenders, and we work with uh, regular lenders, um, they're often looking for a down payment um, that changes the um, loan to value ratio. But in, in our um, homes, the home itself and the land is already, the, the subsidy that's in the home um, already is um, establishes that loan to value ratio. So we can keep our, our down payment um, that's paid by the buyer uh, to be very low. Um, and then the, the other question I had, I'm assuming um, it, it, requ it would require owner occupancy. Yes, yes, we do require that this be the person's primary residence. Um, and, all, and we can allow people to um, rent out a room now and again um, or have a roommate, but they must continue to live in the home. That's part of the spirit and intent of, of the model is to create first-time home buying opportunities for people. Absolutely. We don't want them buying this and then going on and buying something else and keeping this as an investment piece, right? Yeah. Uh, looks like Council Member Van has a question. And thank you, Council Member McGorvin. Um, and thank you so much, Kathleen, for your presentation. Very thorough. I, I love the, the pictures and break down very much appreciated this and the, the land trust um, program that you have. I do have a question regarding the homeowner, um, homeowner diversity. Do you have more disaggregate data uh, or these are the, the data that we have like within the Asian community or the um, black or African American community? Do we have breakdown of uh, particular uh, ethnicities? I don't think we um... I don't think we have that. Uh, we ask pretty simple um, self-identifying categories when people apply. Um, we're, our, our system, this might be getting a little too technical, but we have a system that rolls up to a national uh, database with um, the Grounded Solutions Network, all the other community land trusts across the nation. And so we agree on a set of um, uh, identifiers um, that people apply for. So that we can aggregate our data. Um, so I don't think we break it down into subcategories. Great question. And I had a question kind of along similar lines. Um, 
with, with respect to so the fact that they're permanently affordable is is a hundred percent what makes it work. I mean, I, that's it would not work at all to do all this work and then have it go back and get sold at back at market rate again. Um, knowing that there would be a price cap on resale, my question would be, um, what other efforts since there can't be a bidding war essentially? What other efforts would be made, and how would you ensure fair housing laws are followed? Yeah, great. Thanks. Great question. So we, um, we use a tie-breaking system. We, we do have competition for these homes. Often as many as two to three families will want um, a single home, and we expect uh, to have a fair bit of competition for um, the homes in, uh, at Willow Crest. Uh, we do have a fair housing tie-breaking system. Uh, it starts with income qualification. It includes um, aspects like um, uh, ties to the area, have you been displaced from the area, household size, fit for the number of bedrooms. For example, we don't necessarily want to sell a um, four-bedroom home to a one-person household when, you know, when um, households, larger households are in need of um, larger homes. Um, so um, uh, also whether somebody fits that homeless um, definition or housing unstable definition uh, will um, increase someone's chances of winning the tie-breaking. We will be publishing the tie-breaking um, criteria uh, when we do our information sessions on how to apply. So people will have some specifics about what that tie-breaking system is. If, if we still at the end of the day have um, people tied, then we um, we just use a, a lottery, a random selection to choose between equally qualified candidates. Great, thank you. Um, I, I don't know that I have any more questions per se, uh, just certainly a comment, but I wanna make sure I give anyone else who has, who has uh, any feedback before we, uh, as we are coming up around our 645 mark, we'd want to adjourn by, but I wanna make sure I give others the opportunity to provide input if you should have any but if you don't because uh kathleen was so thorough in her presentation that's totally all right too um the the the, the two last things i say one is uh council member corman wanted me to though he couldn't be here today wanted to uh, me to express his full support for this project um, and that he's really excited about it uh, perhaps almost as much as i am um uh, the, the the question i guess um you know, to me, it's just the scale of size. Like, I, I'm hoping, and I'm looking to Mark a little bit on this, that they, you mentioned Erlington, that we this is something we can duplicate more and more, uh, certainly in Renton, but, but elsewhere. It sounds like you guys have a fair number of projects lined up um, in the queue, which is great to hear. Um, so uh, let's let's definitely see see more of this. I know uh, for for uh, my family, you know, when we, we were, had the very good fortune of being able to buy a townhome at a very good time in the market, if we hadn't bought then, I, I think, you know, um, we would have certainly not. Met, we would certainly met some challenges, certainly in finding affordable options. So uh, great to to see that this that we're doing this so that people can can access. Um, uh, it really puts, I guess, the, the the two types of equity we're looking at here um, in terms of, of what we can get as an outcome. So, yeah, um, yeah I have uh, no other questions, feedback. So um, I want to thank you both. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Thank you, Mark. Um, thank, you're going to let off the thank you. Thank you for your support of this project. It's it's literally taken a village to get this um, to the place that it is, and we wouldn't be here without your contributions and support. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Kathleen. All right. Well, um, this was our one and only agenda item today. So um, with that, we'll go ahead and adjourn the committee hall, and we'll see you back here at 7 p.m. for our regular council meeting. And I believe Councilmember Corman will be back at that time. Uh, but if not, I'll uh, I will carry on. Thanks. <laughs>